want to give you a little idea, an idea about what I believe to be the next generation of enterprise application architecture, which creates a new form of enterprise UI, right? So user interface. So this is a user interface discussion we're about to have. So it's an idea, and I got it from a fellow named Bill Gates. I listened to a few interviews of Bill Gates a while back over the summer time frame, and he kind of blew my mind because one of the first statements he made was, I saw ChatGPT, and it was kind of mind-blowing. And I was kind of curious about this. Why in the world was Bill Gates mind blown? Another interviewer went on to say, hey, was it more mind blowing than the first demo of the graphical user interface that you saw at Xerox Park? And for a lot of people, you don't know the Xerox Park reference. It's a, it's a bit old at this point. But Xerox Park was an organization, Xerox. They used to make copiers and things of that nature. And they had a research center in Palo Alto, the PA part of it. And Steve Jobs and Bill Gates both went to see a demonstration from the Xerox team that basically covered this concept of graphical user interface, Windows, and a mouse. Those ideas, of course, created what we now know as Windows and Apple, Macintosh, and the graphical user interface that we see for desktop, laptop, and even smartphone applications. So it motivated a lot, is what Bill says. It motivated a lot of what Apple and Microsoft did with personal computing in the decade after that. But compared to unlocking a new type of intelligence that can read and write graphics interfaces, uh, interface is clearly less impactful. Again, I was struck by these comments. I knew I'd just seen the most important advance in technology since the graphical user interface. And for me, as someone who's been in this business now over 30 years, the graphical user interface was one of the biggest paradigm shifts we've seen in that time window. And another key element when this people kept asking him questions, the interviewers kept pestering away, poking at this question, he finally said, look, I'm not teaching you 59 menus and dialogues. And he goes on to talk about like Photoshop because they ask him questions like, well, do you believe a user could understand this new AI technology? And essentially all you're doing is speaking to it or typing to it in your natural language. So yes, I'm not teaching you 59 menus and dialogues. But this sparked a big idea in me, and I thought about it at great length. And I thought about it from the perspective of customer service, because I travel a lot. I go off and attend, uh, you know, I mean, I go off and attend conferences. I go off to different customer meetings, and I often have a lot of changes that must be made. I have situations where my meeting schedule has changed. I don't know the event schedule. I got to move the flight around here or there, or maybe add another city along the way. Or maybe the flight is delayed and I got to make a change. Flight is canceled. I got to make a change. My baggage is lost. I just have lots of customer service issues. And one of the things I've always been struck by when I call the hotline, for one, what the airline I call is incredibly good at their hotline, but I can tell the person on the other end is fighting their software. They're clicking, 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 pointing and clicking and trying to find the answer to my question. And I was also had several times where they were like, I'm sorry, sir. I can't seem to get that information on my system. I need to call a colleague. Meaning they had to phone a friend, like a lifeline, like, and who wants to be a millionaire? Phone a friend to get an answer to my question. Uh, and in some cases, they actually put us into a three-way call where I got the other colleague on the line and we eventually had a three-way conversation about what my needs were. So I've always been struck by the issue of enterprise systems not giving our users, this computer service operator, right, our service help desk person what they need. So they have maybe a really advanced, nice user experience that looks like this one. So if it's flights, you know, maybe it's about upcoming flights, flight history. They now have a nice navigational system on the left and things across the top. That's pretty typical web application design we've been doing now for the last 15 years or so. And maybe they have a nice screen that tells you more about that passenger or things of that nature. And the reason this is difficult is if a programmer does not put the field on the screen, the user, the operator in this case, the customer service rep, they can't get access to that data. It is blocked to them until the developer gets around to adding that field. And so this is why there are so many different types of screens and different types of systems where a user has to go from system to system to system, and they may not ever get the answers they need uh, to answer a customer service question. So we used to refer to this as swivel chair integration. That's what this image represents, right? Swivel chair integration, meaning the user would have to flip from application to system to system to application, window to window to window, you know, across different systems. In some cases, using two or three computers. And in my case, even having to phone a friend to get the answer to the customer question and, that they had. Okay, so this is the problem that, I, that I've seen and it's not, we've not solved it. But looking at Bill Gates' example of, I'm not teaching you 59 menus and dialogues, what if we just spoke to the application in natural language, in my case, English? 
Now, you might be thinking, wait, we did this once before, right? For the you old timers that have been around a while, you're like, wait, we, we did this thing called Structured English Query Language. That's what it used to be called. SQL, SQL. That's what we did. That was the point. Well, I've not met too many business users that mastered SQL, right? They still use generic English, if you will. English that makes sense to them, not the stuff that actually has to be syntactically correct. So that's been a blocker for the use of SQL to dynamically get the data you want. So what if this customer service agent can say, show me the customer in question. Show me the customer in question. That's all you got to say. And the system dynamically renders a profile page. Get, again, HTML and JavaScript and all that, that's dynamic. It's meant to be dynamically loaded at runtime. What if the backend system could basically say, show me Burst Sutter's membership profile, and it highlights the key elements of data that the large language model, the AI, determines I need to know. And I can see immediately a nice little dashboard. And you might be thinking, "What? but we could design a dashboard that looks this awesome. Sure, you could. A lot of enterprises cannot have, they don't have the skill to design a dashboard that looks this awesome. But this, uh, this dashboard is completely rendered dynamically on the fly by the backend system based on my interest in Show Me Burr Sutter's membership profile. And now I can see that Burr might be a diamond, million miler, has this account information, has lots of reported issues. Hmm, and he's calling me up again to report another issue. So show me this customer's most recent case logs, right? I can speak English. I can say, show me Burr Sutter's most recent case logs. And that might be the top end things that come out of our system that basically show that, yeah, we have had lost baggage, cancellations, delays, change of seat because we changed equipment, food request unavailable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? We have kind of really maybe upset this customer over the last 12 months or so. But I can dynamically pick up on that right away. And I can also see the sentiment and tone of some of these issues as I'm dealing with the customer in real time who might still be unhappy about the situation they were experiencing at this moment. So that's helpful. I can dynamically render what's going on in the last few months. What are the upcoming flights for the customer? Because often if a customer is calling in real time, they want to know what's happening in the very near future, right? What's happening next? They're about to fly or they hoped to fly if they weren't canceled. So what's what are the upcoming flights for Burr Setter? And I can see, boom, 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 here they are. Here's the one that's next, 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 next. And then I can say, okay, are you asking about the RDU to Boston trip or are you asking about the San Francisco to, to New York? LGA, right? LaGuardia. And I can immediately drill down now because I can dynamically get a nice user experience. Again, where no programmer was required, we we'll render the whole UI based on these English-based prompts and the back-end large language model. Now, how many times has this customer been upgraded in the last 12 months? I Again, I'm trying to judge the sentiment and work with this customer. I'm trying to solve their problems, make them happy. Well, maybe we've actually treated them pretty well in some cases. Yes, we treated them poorly. We have lots of open issues with, you know, the previous issues of lost baggage and flight cancellations. But we've also had some upgrades, right? You know, hey, customer, you know, we have upgraded you. I know you're asking about upgrades, but, you know, I see that we've upgraded you a few times here in the past. Um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to work with you because you're a loyal customer. But, you know. We have, we have had treated you well in some cases, okay? You know, again, contextual information to, so that this customer service rep can better serve that customer. What is the best airport to fly to for visit, into for a visit to Botswana? This is actually a real problem that I had recently. If you actually look at a lot of airlines and travel, one of the questions you have as a person who wishes to travel is, how do I get from here to wherever you wish to go? And that does not matter that that airline does not fly directly to that airport. You just need to get there from here. So what is the best airport for me to fly into if I wish to visit Botswana? And again, I can dynamically render out the content from this context, right? I can basically say, okay, here are the various options for you if you need to get over the Gaborone uh, into the capital of Botswana and other options, right? So in other words, I know I can get from here to there and I'm just trying to serve the customer. Again, all these user experiences are dynamically rendered at the point of input of the prompt. Again, we can do this with HTML very easily. The back end has to be a lot more flexible. It has to be able to dynamically essentially render out the back end, SQL or API calls, things of that nature. But I believe this is the game changer that would make large language models super interesting to all developers within the big enterprise when it actually becomes a key CLI, command line interface, to all their enterprise applications, right? Not just searching through the PDFs using RAG, Retrieve Augmented Generation, but every aspect of an application being rendered dynamically in real time from an English-based or natural language prompt.